Hey guys, Joe here with the Portland Seattle Coffee Gear, bringing you part two to our pour over party. So, if our brewing system is the second most important part of brewing, our first most important part is the coffee. Without coffee, we wouldn't have brewing systems. So, choosing the right coffee for you is a matter of personal preference. Uh, it really doesn't matter because it all boils down to roughly the same thing. Your general recipe is one part coffee to 16.6 parts water, generally. You can go as high as 18, some people like go to go down to 14, but as a rule of thumb, you wanna start at 16.6 parts water. And you just take however large of a cup of coffee you want, measure it out, divide by 16, and you now get your coffee levels. I suggest working in grams because they are intrinsically more accurate than ounces. And if you need to do the conversion, one fluid ounce is 29.57 grams. Easy math, right? So we have our coffee, we have our amount of water, and now we need our time. That's our basic recipe. Your average cup of pour over with the majority of the coffees that I've run into and my barista counterparts, uh, proper extraction takes two and a half to three and a half minutes. Dark roast coffee, light roast coffee, does not matter. Uh, coffee has a finite solubility point. It dissolves at roughly the same rate, which is somewhere between two and a half and three and a half minutes when under 210 degree water. But in order to get that two and a half to three and a half minutes of flow, we need to pay a lot of attention, a lot of attention to our grind. Uh, coarser filters are very different than lightly or than heavily woven thick filters. Uh, think about them in terms of fishing nets. A coarse filter is going to be an ocean fishing net. It catches all of the big fish and lets the little fish through. A really, really heavy filter is uh, a much tighter woven fishing net, a, a butterfly net. You go fishing with that, you're going to catch everything that is in the way of the net and only let water through. Your coffee is the same way. What you are letting through is the oils and the gunk, which is uh, dissolved solids or insoluble solids that have broken apart microscopically and fallen through. That's what imparts flavor. It gives your coffee body. If you like heavily bodied coffees, you really want to steer yourself towards coarser filters, something like the Hario V60, uh, gold tone or stainless steel mesh filters, and the flannel pot. Those will give you a lot more options to engineer the coffee you like. Uh, flow restriction, like on the Melita or the Bonavita immersion dripper, will also help impart that body. If you don't like body and you're like me, uh, I look for clarity and nuance instead of heft of flavor. I want the weird things. I want to taste the hibiscus and the, the ginger, not the smoked almond in the coffee. I prefer items like the Kalita, uh, a coarser grind with a flow restriction, uh, just because it allows a little bit more water to flow through, or my preferred favorite, as most of you are aware, the Chemex. That really thick, heavy filter blocks that body. It blocks that dissolved and indissolved solubles from ending up in my cup, and I get a lot more of the nuanced flavor that washes through the bean versus the flavor imparted from the roasted plant product. Uh, and it's really just spending time with friends you like who want to drink coffee and a desire to drink lots of coffee uh, and a good grinder. Having a burr grinder is an efficient tool to reproducing results, whereas a blade grinder kind of gets in the way of itself. Uh, but you know, you just sit there, start anywhere, get your water temperature right and start pouring. The whole thing wants to take two and a half to three and a half minutes. If it's taken six minutes, you might as well give it a try. Why waste coffee? Uh, chances are it will be bitter and slightly overdeveloped. There will be too much flavor in the same style, so your brain's gonna be like, I'm just tasting bitter coffee. Whereas the opposite end, if it only takes like a minute and a half to pour all of your water, you're looking at 
uh, underdeveloped, usually sour coffee. It's gonna make your face pinch versus your throat closing up. You adjust accordingly and you keep on adjusting until you get a cup of coffee that tastes like you want. Uh, we're going to basically do that in part three of this. We're gonna take our preferred brewer, our preferred filter, merge them together into a cacophony of joy and wonder in our cup of coffee. See you next time, folks.